Okay, guys, so let's start. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so uh, what I did last lecture or last couple of lectures uh, was explaining how can you do loops uh, like uh, for loops, while loops. I explained how can you do it in different ways. Also, I explained how can you do, how I explained the branch instructions and also I explained how can we use branch instructions to create statements we used in C language before, like if, if, else, and so on. Okay. So uh, first, uh, on um, Thursday in the lab, we are going to have a lab on branch and loop instructions. Okay. We are going to also have a quiz on the same topic. Uh, so you need to study uh, branch and loop instruction. Uh, I, as I told you before, the coming lab is somehow long. It's I cannot say it's it's difficult, but I can say it needs some time. I can say you need to study the topic well before you come, uh, and you have to give it some time. I can say the lab is very important if you can do the lab and understand the lab by yourself you should be okay in loops and differential instruction and i can tell you uh, loops and differential instructions are very important we are going to use them all the time you have to understand them anyway because we are going to use them all the time okay so here uh, before i start uh, today's lecture i want to give you some help uh, on, on the coming lab. I'm just trying to help you. So here in the coming lab, uh, I'm telling you we have array, okay? Array of bytes, something like this one. And this array of byte, bytes has delimiter. And this delimiter is minus 128. Is that okay? So, and the elements here always take numbers from positive 127 to minus or to negative 127 okay so the elements here and this number let me this number here minus 28 is reserved as a delimiter so it cannot be repeated here as any element all element this is the range of the element here and i this number is reserved as a delimiter okay so uh what and then i ask it you some questions okay so for example i ask it you how many numbers here in the array that are positive how many numbers are negative and so on so i i ask it you how many even number i ask it you some questions okay so the the way you have to do this lab is you need you need to, you need you need to scan the array okay to scan the array, scan here means you have you have to go through all the elements of this array. Okay, to scan this array, as I explained before, you should not use for loops, right? You have to use while loops. Why? Because I don't know how many elements we we have here. You can exchange it. Okay, I give you one example. Okay, but I'm asking you if I change the number of element, still your program should work without doing any changes to your program. You got what I'm saying? So if I give you in the example, we have 10 elements. It doesn't mean it has to always to be 10 elements. Is that okay? Answer what I'm saying? So what I'm saying, you can change the length of the array and then you still your program can work without changing anything. That's because you should not, your program should not uh, use or should not need the length of the array. Only it, it only need to know the delimiter. That's why the first thing you have to think about, I have to do while loops, right? While loop, only one loop. So I have to do while loop so that I can I can go through I, I can go through all the elements here. Okay. And then once I find minus 20 uh, minus uh, 128, that means I'm done. Okay. This is one thing I told you about. Another thing I told you about, the, this array cannot be more than 255 elements. It can be less than or equal to 200. It cannot be more than 255 elements. Some students got confused 
why why they need this information you need it because in one of the tasks in this lab is to count you need you need to count how many elements we have here because you need to get average value something like that so you need to count how many elements okay so to count how many elements i need to know if my counter has to be byte or a word you got what i'm saying but here because i am sure the number of elements are not going to exceed 255 that means if you want to count the number of element here and you want to you want to define a variable it has to be a byte okay guys byte should be enough I shouldn't say it has to be a byte. I can say because it can be a word, but I'm saying byte should be enough because I, I limit it to 255. For sure, it's easier in programming to use byte than using words and more efficient. It's not recommended to use words if you don't need it. Okay, guys. So now, so so I'm not solving the lab. I'm just wanting to help you. I'm giving you some idea about what, what you have to do. So you may need to do something like that. Okay. Uh, why loop something like that? You know, X should point at the first location in the array, right? And then you need one element pointed by X, and you have to compare it with minus 128. And if it is equal, so if this element is equal to negative 128, just, just leave. I'm done. If not, so this branch is not going to be taken. I will come this way. And here you have to put your code and at the very end, you have to increment the x, right? And then go to the beginning again to big. Oh, sorry. I, yeah. So here you have to write here, jump, uh, unconditional jump to to here, to come to here again, right? So you have to put here un, unconditional. I shouldn't give you all the details. I'm just giving you, I'm just trying to help you because this lab needs some work. So you need to put here unconditional jump to here, okay? So the only way to get out of this loop is. Uh, to make this condition is true when you find minus 28. Is that okay? So by this way, I can make Y loop, okay? And X is pointing, so X should point in the first element here in the first iteration. Second iteration, X is here. Third iteration, X is here. Fourth iteration, I'm here, and so on, okay? Also, this code, in every iteration, I have to work only in one element. Okay, I'm gonna give you some details. But here, in, 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 in what you have to write here, I'm gonna work only in one element. For example, I'm giving you one example. In this lab, I give you several tasks. So I give you only one example for one task. So here, this is a body of Y. So this this uh, rectangle here is actually should be here. This is a body of Y. For example, I'm asking you to count how many positive numbers we have, okay? So what you can do, if A already has the element, the current element is in A, so I can compare A to, to zero. And then I can say if it is less or equal, okay, so skip this one. So if A is less than or equal zero, you have to skip this one, okay? If it is greater than zero, which means it is positive, you can increment this counter, okay? So this is one test, one task for one, uh, for one, uh, for 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 the element here, one element. Okay, so you have to do also other other tasks here. You got what I'm saying? In this lab, I give you several tasks. So in every iteration, I'm I'm repeating it several times because several students got confused before in this part. In every iteration, I'm gonna work only in one element pointed by register X. Okay, so here this is one task, another task, another task, another task. For example, I give you one example here for one task. You can do the rest in, in the same idea. Okay, guys. Another very important, very, very important point, because this program is somehow long. Okay. I, believe me, it's not difficult. Once you do it by yourself, you find it's not difficult. Okay. However, maybe it's a problem comes from the fact that this is the first long program you write in assembly. You got what I'm saying? But it's it's easy. Uh, so what I'm saying is, my advice to you is, um, the worst, the worst thing you can do in this lab, okay? And actually in general, just you write all the code, run your program, the program doesn't work, it doesn't give co correct results, and now I have to look at many lines, okay? 
uh, I have to look at many lines to know what's wrong, okay? I don't recommend to do that at all. So what is, what, what's better you have to do? The, the better way is you can just program one task, okay? Run the program, okay? Now the code is small. You have a small code, okay? So it's easier to catch error if you have error, okay? Then make sure this task is okay, is working, and then I, I put the second task and test the two tasks now. And then I, I put the third one and test, test everything, okay? Uh, so I think I recommend to do that uh, in this lab. Um, another important thing, guys, I don't need to tell you, but just I want to help you. Uh, I told you these numbers here, positive and negative. So all the branches you have to use should be signed. You should not ask me. Or if you need to do extension, anything you want to do, it has to be, it has to be signed. Okay, guys, because the numbers are signed. Any question here, guys? You understand the main idea of the lab, please? If you want to learn, this is, I, this topic, loops and branches, is very, very important. You will need, we are, are going to use it all the time. Please try to give this lab some time and try to do it before you come to the lab, okay? So that you can ask the TE if you have a problem, okay? Three hours, the lab time may not be enough if if you don't do the pre-lab. Okay, guys. Any questions here? Please, if you have any quiz, question, unmute your mic and talk to me, okay? Okay. Now, I'm going to give you more examples before. So, so what I'm going to do right now, guys, I already explained loop, how can you make loops, and also branch instruction. I still have one example, only one example before I move to shift instruction, uh, logic, uh, shift, shift instruction. Also, we're going to have rotate instructions and also uh, Boolean, Boolean logic, logic operations. Okay. So I'm, I'm almost done. Only one example. I'm going to explain it right now. I'm, I've almost finished loop and the branch instructions okay and next week lab is going to be about these topics about shift rotate and boolean okay so anyway so let's see the, the last example i have here guys i'm telling you i have two arrays oh yeah sorry i forgot to tell you i shouldn't tell you but just in case um if here if you use register x I use register X here as a pointer. Is that okay? Maybe here inside this code, you want to use X for something else. You're doing multiplication, whatever. You, uh, you want to use register X here. Okay. So in this case, as I said before, what can you do? You should not, you should not damage the value of X because X is pointer. So when I come here, X should have the correct value. As I told you before, guys, you can save the value of X somewhere. Okay, and before you come here, and you, then you can use X, and before you come here, you can return it back to X. Uh, to be more specific, you can store the value of X in, in, a, in a memory, in, in tem temporary uh, a word in memory, and then you can change X, but before you come here, you have to retrieve the value of X again, okay? Uh, you can do that in this lab, but actually, as I told you before, professionally, what usually we do, we don't do this way, professionally as i'm going to explain later what usually we do we push we push x in a stack and then we get it back from stack but for now it's okay you can just put it in a memory location until i explain the stacks so here i mean i'm telling you we have two arrays okay uh, the two arrays have five elements so five elements five elements and all what i want to do i want to copy i want to copy this array from here to this array here okay for sure don't copy element by element. Otherwise, if you do that, for sure, five element may not be a big problem. But what if you have 100 or 1,000 elements? So if you copy one by one, your code is going to be too long. That's why we need to use four. You, we need to use loop, right? So let's see how can we do that using loop. So here we have array one. I just define array one. It has five elements. I put some initial values here. And then I define array two. Okay, guys, sometimes there is some space here, but you know, there should not be space, right? Uh, otherwise, uh, 
code code warrior is not going to accept it. You should not leave space here. And then here I define array. This array should, uh, it has five elements uninitialized. So now I have two arrays, okay? What I'm going to do now, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make for loop. I'm going to make for loop, okay? Uh, and in every iteration, I'm going to work only in one element. Copy one element to one element here, okay, guys? Now, because I have two arrays, I should use two pointers, not only one pointer, because these two arrays are in different location in memory. So for example, here I'm gonna use X to point on one element here in array one, and then I have to use Y to point on one element here in, in Y2. And then in every iteration, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy a byte, okay, at a location pointed by X to, to a byte at location pointed by y and then increment x, increment y, uh, just as you will see now. So in the very beginning, guys, first of all, you should understand, guys, why I need two pointers. I need two pointers because I'm gonna work on two arrays at the same time. Make sense? So one pointer is used for one array. The second pointer is used for the second, for the other array, okay? So what I'm gonna do, this is initialization. In the very beginning, okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna store the array one, the beginning address in X and the beginning address in Y. So X now is pointing at the beginning address. Y is pointing on, on the beginning address in this array, okay? And then what I'm gonna do here, guys, as you see, I'm gonna copy a byte. I'm gonna copy a byte from the location pointed by X to a location pointed by Y. So I'm gonna copy from one byte one element or byte from here to one byte or element here, okay? And then I'm done, I'm done. And then I have to increment X and then I have to increment Y for next iteration. And then I have to go back and repeat again. So, so I have to increment this one and increment this one. So that in iteration number two, I'm gonna copy element two here to element two here. Is that okay? So that's exactly what I did. So I can say move byte zero comma X comma zero comma Y increment X increment Y. Okay, and then I have to loop back. How many times I have to loop back? Yeah, you can do it five times, right? Or I have a better idea, as I explained it before. You should understand it. Very interesting and very useful. Okay, I told you, in instead of using instead of using pointer and counter, I can use only pointer. So the pointer, I, I already need the pointer anyway because I have to work on an array. Pointers are used if you want to read the elements of, of an array, okay? So I need a pointer anyway, okay? So I can use the pointer as a counter as well, and that's what I did. Look here, guys. So here, I'm going to start from 1,000, for, for example, at location 1,000. Whatever it is, I just give you example 1,000, okay? And because it's five element, so once I come to here, 1,005, because every time I increment, right? So once I finish... Once I finish the five element and I come here, okay, guys, so that means I am done. That's, that's, I, I explained this idea before. I'm just repeating it because it is very important. So here, I'm going to comp compare X to array one plus five. Array one is the initial value, right? And the five is added to it. For example, if the initial value 1,000, the code order is going to add five to make it 1,005. Again, I said it before. I'm going to repeat it. This plus... It's not, and we don't, we don't have this plus in assembly. This is not for assembly. This is for the code warrior. So the code warrior is going to calculate this one and put a number here, okay? So this one should be the address here. So what's going to happen, I'm going to compare X to this address if it is not equal loop. That means I'm going I'm gonna, to I'm gonna keep looping until I come here. Uh, once I finish the five, I'm going to come here. Okay, guys, is that clear? So in every iteration, in the very beginning, X here, Y here, in this iteration, I'm going I'm to copy byte from here to byte from here, as you see here, and then increment X, increment to Y, and then in iteration two, I'm going to copy byte and byte, increment X, increment to Y, okay? And iteration number three, copy byte to a byte, and so on. Okay, guys, any questions? For sure, instead of using these, these three instruction you can make it short this way as i explained before one comma x plus one comma y plus so this this instruction is equivalent to these three instruction just to compact compact instruction okay any question guys
Okay, let me tell you something here, guys. Okay, if this array is word, array of uh, the elements. Hello, can you hear me? I think we have some problems in the internet, hopefully. Hello, guys, you, still you can hear me, right? I can hear you. Okay, sorry, yeah, because I received a message that the internet is not stable, Wi-Fi is not, but it, it looks, everything looks okay, okay. Anyway, so what I'm saying here, guys, um, uh, uh, what if it is array of words, how it would be different, okay? Number one, instead of using byte, I have to use word. So I'm gonna copy a word from here to a word from here. So this is one difference, okay? The other difference is, if I have to increment X twice and I have to increment Y twice because every element should take two location. So X should be incremented twice, okay? Or if you wanna use this one, you can still use this one, but here it has to be W, move W, move word. Also, you have to put here number two, not number one, number two, because every time you have to add two to X and add two to Y, is that okay? One more thing I told you about, guys, now, if, if this array of words, and we start from 1,000, we're not gonna end at 1,005, right? We're here because this was array of bytes. So every every element takes only one byte. But in this case, because every element is gonna take two, so here this one should be 1,000, uh, uh, 1,010, right? But, but because it is hexadecimal, uh, or it has to be plus 10 here, or or if you want to express it in hexadecimal, should be 100A, because A is 10. Or you can put it this way. The good thing about this one, guys, you don't you don't need to worry. If you look, this one, it is in can be in decimal, so I can put number 10 here instead of A, so you can put this one in decimal, and you can put, put this one in hexadecimal, and you don't you don't need to worry about anything, because code word is gonna, is gonna take care of it, it's gonna convert uh, this, uh, decimal uh, to hexadecimal so any any question guys you understand that i need to move use move w you understand in every iteration i have to increment it twice you understand uh, my my last address is not going to be this one right any question guys great okay um yeah, here I'm just, I'm saying, you know, increment X is different from increment zero comma X, completely different, right? In increment X, here you increment register X, increment register Y, increment register A or B, right? So this is for, for registers. Here, if I say increment zero comma X, you actually hear increment, increment a memory location pointed by X, okay? So this should be a memory location, okay? Anyway. Here, I'm, I'm telling you, and that's what we're going to see in the coming chapter, chapter three. In chapter three, we're going to use the idea of delimiter, something like that. I'm going I'm to teach uh, a, a, a subroutine. This subroutine is called, is called put a string to LCD, LCD, okay? This one is used if you want to display a, a, a number on the LCD, uh, sorry, a message on the LCD. So you can put any message you want with any length, but you have to put zero at the end. Right, and just you send it here. It's very useful to use delimiter here. Otherwise, if you don't use use delimiter, listen to me. It's important to understand it. Why? Why it is more convenient? It's more convenient to use delimiters because I can just put zero and then send the message, right? And then the subroutine will figure out. The subroutine is gonna figure out how big or how long is the message, right? However. If you don't use a delimiter, in addition to the message, I have also to send in number, the number of, of, uh, of elements. So I need to count one, two, three, four, five. So I need to send five as well. One, two, three, four, five, six is gonna be not convenient, especially if the message is long. So in, in a case like this, it is much more convenient to just put delimiter and then I can change. I can change the length of the array. So this array, right? So this this length can be different. One time I can I can send the word hello, and another time I can send how are you, how are you today, or something else, right? So delimiter in this case very useful when the same subroutine can receive or 
or the uh, arrays, these arrays is different length. Okay, guys, any question? Okay. Now, I'm going to move to the next topic. In next topic, uh, again, I think the coming topic should be very easy. I think the most difficult topic, I, hopefully, I don't want to use the word difficult. Nothing is difficult if you, if you understand what I'm teaching, if you read the slides, everything will be okay. But maybe the part you need to you need to to focus to study well is the uh, loops and the branch instructions. Okay, the the coming coming instructions are very easy, uh, very very easy. So now I'm gonna teach a new set of instructions. We call them shift instruction. So what shift instruction are doing? I'm gonna explain right now. We have two types of this instruction. We have something we call it logic shift, right? And also we have arithmetic shift, okay? Under logic shift, I can shift right or I can shift left. This is the direction, right or left. Same thing here, under arithmetic shift, so you can shift left or right, okay, guys? So I'm going to now, I'm going to elaborate now. So you are telling me we are doing shift. You shift, yes, we shift, shift. And the direction, right or left, that's true. And we have logic and we have arithmetic, okay? I'm going to explain, for sure, the word arithmetic, it means it's arithmetic, right? <laughs> yes, the word arithmetic here, that means this one should do some, some mathematical operation. That's true. Otherwise, I, I would not use the word arithmetic, right? Makes, makes sense, right? Anyway, so let's see, let's see, explain how, how they work. So let's start with logic shift, right? In logic shift, you, if you have a byte this way, okay? And the first bit here is bit zero, bit one, bit two, until bit number seven, okay? If I shift, if I shift this byte to the left, what it means? It means every byte is going to be shifted, okay, to the next position, but this way, right? So bit seven has to go to, to location number six, okay, instead of location number seven. And then zero, which always we shift with zero. That, so location number seven, we put zero, okay? Location number six should have bit number seven, okay? And so on. What about the first one here? So the first bit should be bit number one. What about bit zero? So it's gonna go to the carry. This is how it works, right? So when you shift, okay, because this one shift right. So shift right here, this is, is this is here you are shifting right okay so every bit is going to be shifted one one only one position you insert zero here and then the first bit has to go to the carry okay what about shift left it's it, so here yeah this is how it looks like after we shift right what about shift left it's the same thing exactly same thing but i'm going to change the direction and instead of this way it's going to be this way okay for example here I'm, and we always shift to zero always okay so here zero is gonna come here and then bit zero as you see here zero and then bit zero and then here the last one is bit six where is bit seven has to go to secondary okay guys so that's what we call logic shift we have right and left is that clear what shift means shift means every bit should be shifted one position and then in the beginning we insert zero and then what the last bit Okay, has to go to the carry. Okay, that's what we call the logic shift, uh, right, right or left. So, okay, guys, any question? I'm gonna explain for sure how this can be useful. Okay, but before I do that, I wanna explain what, why we have some kind of shift. We call it arithmetic. Okay, because actually, arithmetic, because shift can be used to to multiply by two or divide by two, right? So every shift operation, actually, if you shift left, you actually multiply the number by two. If you shift right, you actually divide the number by two. Okay, give me example. I'm gonna give you example. What this number is? This number four, right? If I shift left, so now it is eight, so it multiplied by two, right? If I shift left again, now it is 16, right? So every time you shift by left, you multiply by two, right? And also every time, I sh if, if you start from here, you shift right, I'm gonna come here, right? So 16 should become eight. If I'm here and then you shift right, you, you get four. So you always divide divide by two, okay guys? Someone can, can tell me. So now 
I'm, I'm trying to give you example just to convince you that shift using shift we can do multiplication by two and if every one shift you multiply by two if you do two shifts you multiply it by four right because two one shift you multiply by two another shift you multiply by another two so two times two should shift it by four so if you if you have this one here if you shift it twice you get 16 right anyway so i here i'm trying to convince you that shift rift is equivalent to multiplication by two and shift right is equivalent to division by two someone can ask you but we already learned it multiplication in instructions before so why why I do shift instead of doing multiple multiply by two or divide by two i already explained some instruction for multiplication or division uh, okay um i can tell you for sure you can use an instruction i taught before no problem at all you can use them that's fine however right many if you care about efficiency okay sometimes if i want to do some complicated operations and I have to do a lot of division, a lot of multiplication. So the people do it efficiently using using shift instructions. So I can tell you, shift instructions um, can multiply by two or divide by two very efficiently, very efficiently comparing to the multiplication or division instruction I used before. Okay, maybe in this course you may not need it, but in the future. If you see some people uh, used it um, in an algorithm or in a program to speed up the pro at least you you learn that it uh, we can speed up multiplication division this way but maybe for the purpose of this course you may not need it and just you can use multiplication or division okay guys so now uh, you you are telling us now we have arithmetic shift right and we have a uh, logic shift in instruction so how they are different how they are different are they doing the same thing like this one here i'm gonna tell you now so for the arithmetic shift in instruction guys okay let's look at arithmetic shift uh, ar uh, arithmetic shift lift a lift a lift you insert a zero right and the last bit has to go to the carrier okay this is similar this is the same thing like like this one right same thing like shift logic shift lift yes they are the same that's that's true so what i want to say guys here shift lift logic or arithmetic they are the same yes you insert a zero a last one goes goes to the carry and i give you one example here if i have two sorry this is number one if i shift it lift i get number two right if this is minus one if this is this number is minus one and i shift the lift i'm gonna get minus two this way okay so yes uh, arithmetic shift lift is similar to, to logic shift lift you insert a zero last one go to go to the carry however arithmetic shift right is different is different okay so if you see here for right shift right we insert a zero and the last one goes to the carry, right? This is not the case in case of arithmetic shift right. In arithmetic shift right, what we do, we don't shift with zero. Look here, guys. We shift with the sign bit, with the last bit. So if, the no, if this number is positive, the last bit is zero. So we're going to shift with zero, right? If this number is negative, right? So last bit is one. So we're going to shift by one okay guys why we do it this way we do this way so that it works we can do division why because if the number is negative guys if the number is negative and you shift to a zero you, you are going to change the number you are going to you are not going to do division because this number is negative when i put zero here i'm, I'm going to convert the number to to positive all right yes, right so so in order to make this division uh, work Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat the last bit. So for example, I give you an example, guys. Again, this is in case of arithmetic shift right. So here this is positive two, right? So here the sign bit is zero. So I'm gonna shift to zero. So I'm gonna get positive one, which is correct, right? Let's see another example. This is minus two, 
minus two this way, okay? Last bit is one, okay? So uh, when, I sh when I shift with one, I'm gonna get minus one, so it's gonna work, right? However, if you shift with zero, you're gonna get a completely different number. I don't know, uh, 64, something like the positive number, it's not gonna work, okay, guys? So let me tell you the conclusion before we move forward. The conclusion, guys, is number one, we have what we call shift instructions. You should understand what shift means. Very easy. Every bit is shifted, shifted one step or one position. That's it, right? Um, so just you shift the bits of, of a byte or, or of, of a word, right? Also, we have two types of, of, of shift instruction. We have logic and we have arithmetic, right? And for the direction, we have right and, uh, right and left and, and here also right and left, okay? So for logic, how logic works, logic shift is, uh, 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 work. This number one for logic shift right. Look here, guys. You insert a zero, last one go, goes to the carry. So after you shift, it should be that's what you are gonna get. Okay. For shift left, okay, you insert a zero and bit number seven goes to the carry, as you see here. This is for um, logic shift right and logic shift left. Okay. What about arithmetic left and arithmetic right? Easy. Arithmetic left. Is similar, is similar to logic shift. So it's gonna be the same as this one exactly. The only difference in the right, right is different, right? Uh, here we insert with zero. In case of arithmetic shift right, we insert with bit bit seven. So we're gonna we are gonna repeat bit number seven. It's okay. So bit number seven is zero. I'm gonna insert a zero. If it is one, I'm gonna insert one. In all cases, the bit, the last bit goes to goes to uh, goes to the carry in all cases, as you see here. Okay, guys. Um, then we have here um, here I'm explaining to you the logic instructions we have, what instructions we have, the exact instruction. So for logic shift, that's what we have, guys. L S L, right? L uh, this L uh, for uh, for logic. So logic shift left. Right, so LSL for logic shift left, and then you put here a memory location address for a memory location. Any format for memory location we, we explained to you before. Okay, so what this instruction is gonna do? This instruction is gonna shift this byte. It has to be a byte in memory location. This memory location is gonna shift it to the left one uh, logic left uh, one time. Right. Also, we have here. Uh, logic shift left for register A, logic shift left for register B, and also so this this three instruction for bytes and this instruction for word. So this one here, logic shift left for register G, as you see here, guys. We insert a zero here, we shift the shift, and then this bit has to come here, and then the first bit here has to go to the carry. Okay, so you shift you shift. Uh, uh, here you shift a word okay same thing here guys similar this similar the only difference is that this for right so shift right so the instruction here are similar the only difference in a state of letter uh, l where we're gonna put letter uh, letter r okay so l uh, l s r r so logic shift right logic shift right logic shift right logic shift right Okay, guys, any question? That's easy. That's easy. This is all the instruction we have. Okay. So we have four instruction here and four instruction here for logic shift. Okay, guys, any question? Okay. What about arithmetic instruction? Same thing, but I'm gonna replace I'm gonna replace letter L with, with letter A. Okay, instead of logic, it's gonna be arithmetic. It's here, as you see here. So here A S L. So arithmetic shift lift for memory. Arithmetic shift left for register A, arithmetic shift left for register B, arithmetic shift left for register G. And as I, as I told you, the left, arithmetic or logic, they are the same. So you're doing exactly the same thing, okay? Right is different, as I told you. In case of right, uh, uh, you, you, you don't shift with zero, you shift with the last bit, with the sign bit, okay? So here we have, arithmetic shift right for a byte in memory, arithmetic shift right for register A, arithmetic shift right for register B, but we don't have arithmetic shift right for register G. Okay, guys, that's clear? So we have we have shift 
write forward here and also here, here, but we don't have it here for arithmetic shift, right? Again, that doesn't mean you cannot do it for sure. You can do it, but not uh, using only one instruction. Okay, guys, any question, guys? Okay. Um, let me just before. Before I give you more examples, okay, so let me, I think in the slides, I have some numerical examples. I just want to make sure you, un you, understand, you understand what I explained before, before I move forward, okay? So, yeah, so here I give you some numerical examples if you want to learn more. Yeah, here, here, this table has a summary, guys. I summarize all, uh, all the instructions we have here. Okay, so here, as you see, guys, I give you some numerical example. You can look at them; they are not difficult. So, for example, I tell you, register A should have this number ninety-five, and the carry should equal this number. Okay, and then after, after I I use arithmetic shift lift A, what will be the value in A, and what will be the value in C? Right? I'm gonna ask a question like these questions. Uh, in next week uh, quiz, okay? So next week, we are gonna have a lab. This lab is gonna be about uh, shift instruction and logic instruction, rotate instructions as well and logic, okay? Uh, and we're gonna have a quiz on the same topics as well, okay? So it's gonna be something very easy like this one. So if this is the original value of A and this is C, okay? So what is the new value after you arithmetic shift lift? So what happened, as I told you, you insert a zero here, this shift, this bit has to come here, this bit has to come here, and then this bit has to come here, and this bit has to go to the carry. So this is after you shift lift one time, that's what you are going to get, right? Let's have another example. For example, the memory location, 800, okay, should have this value this way, and the carry is zero. This is the initial value, original value. Okay, so after I execute this instruction, arithmetic shift right, mm, shift right, arithmetic. So don't uh, don't forget arithmetic and shift right. This is the only one. I'm not gonna shift with zero. I'm gonna shift with the last bit. That's what I did here. If you see guys here, what I did. So here because the last this is a negative number. The last bit is one. So I'm gonna shift with with one. So this, this one has to come here, this one has to come here, and then I have to insert one as you see, and then the last one has to go to the carry. So if this is the initial value, that's what I'm gonna get after you execute this instruction. Okay, guys, any question, guys? I'm explaining, I'm explaining fast, or you think the speed is okay? Okay. So now also here, let's see another example. Lift, uh, lift shift right, okay? Uh, so, sorry, logic, left shift right. <laughs> uh, so here, <laughs> it cannot be left and right, okay? Anyway, uh, L here means logic, so logic shift right, okay? So here, that means I'm going to shift right, but it has to be lo uh, logic, right? So that means I'm going to shift with zero uh, for the memory location 800. So if this is the initial value, this is the initial value here. So every bit is going to be, every bit is going to shift to one position. As you see here, the last one has to go to the carry, and then I have to insert a zero here. Okay, guys, any questions? Okay, so let's now continue. Let me. Okay, so every instruction, every instruction I taught before, guys, it should shift only one time. It should shift only one, one shift operation. Okay. What if you what if you want to shift it three times? You have to write the instruction three times, or you have to loop. So you have you have to execute this instruction multiple times, right? To shift multiple times. So because every instruction can only do shift one time. Okay. So for example, if you do if if I do shift sh shift uh, logic shift for register A three times this way, what's gonna happen here? You shift logic shift left. So you're gonna shift it this way. What's gonna happen if after after you execute this instruction, uh, three instructions, you are gonna put zeros here, three zeros, right? Because everyone should insert zero. And then you are gonna, uh, so what's, what's gonna be in the carry only the last 
the last value here. Maybe some students get confused here. Listen to me, guys. This instruction is going to put a bit, a bit in the carry, okay? This one is going to put a value in carry, right? But actually, this value is going to over, override this value, right? Same thing here, because the carry is only one bit. So the carry is going to remember only the last bit you inserted, right? So after execute this instruction, okay? So what should be in the carry is the result it came here, right? Because the value here in the carry is going to be overwritten by this one and then overwritten by this one. Okay, guys? Anyway, so here also I tell you, imagine, imagine I'm going to do logic shift left for register A eight times. So what should be in A after that, right? Everyone here is going to insert a zero, zero, zero. So after eight times, so actually I'm going to get zero, 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 zero. Makes sense, right? So it's, it's going to be equivalent to clear zero. So register zero should be register a should be zero 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 okay um here i'm i'm giving you honestly um i'm giving you one what i am giving you here an example on why how how sometimes we need we need to use it we use shift operation okay other than other than using it for multiplication and division right so how how we can use it okay i give you one example here um as, as I'm going to explain in next chapter, guys, we have eight switches on the on the board, okay? These eight switches are connected to port H, right? So when you read port H, you, you actually you are going to read a byte for port H. You are going to read a byte, okay? In this byte, every bit is associated with one switch. Right? So if this bit is zero, that means the switch is, is connected. If it is one, that means the switch is disconnected. And every time you connect or disconnect, the electronics, the hardware is going to change these numbers here. So at the end, uh, or from a programming point of view, what you are going to see, you are going to you are going to have a byte. You are going to see a byte, right? And all, all what you need, you, you need to check the bits to know if the switch is connected or not, okay? Uh, but the hardware is not your job. The hardware, every time you connect or disconnect, the hardware are going to update these values here, okay? So in one lab, or in one example, in one lab, I'm going to ask you something like that. I'm going to say, um, use these four switches, use these four switches to enter a number between 0 and 15, okay? So you are going to get a number from the user using these four switches. Okay, so so um, so again, I cannot I cannot read four 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 bits. You got what I'm saying? So oh, oh, all what you can gonna get, you are gonna you have to read the whole port port H. So you have to, you are gonna read the byte, right? But I'm not I don't care about the four bits because my number is here, right? So in this case, what can you do? You can shift right four times. So that these four, these four bits are gonna come here, and now I have a byte. This byte should have a value from zero to fifteen. I can take this byte because I can compare it, I can multiply it. You can do whatever you wanna do. So what I did again, guys, I got four bit and I put them in a byte, right? So so uh, some kind of okay. Some it's like I did some kind of bit manipulation somehow. Okay, is that clear, guys? So this is a byte. This is what I'm gonna read on board H. I only need these four bits. I don't care about these four bits. They are used for something else. Why you care about these four bits? Because I told you the user is gonna enter a number here in these four bits. This number can be from zero 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 to one one one. So it's number from zero to fifteen, right? And then I can tell you if it is zero, do something. If it is one, do something else. If so now I want to put this one in a byte so that I can use it. I can use it later. Okay. I can multiply. I can compare. I can use it later. So what I did, this is the byte I'm going to read. I don't care about these four bits. So I'm going to shift four times as you see here. And now I have this useful byte. How? You can use shift in instruction. Okay, guys. Again, I'm just explaining one example how shift can be used. The last, the last thing I want to explain here, guys, is I told you um, shift right can, can divide by two and shift left can multiply by two, right? But so 
what about if the number is signed or unsigned okay how it works is yes, i'm gonna tell you very easy listen to me if the number is unsigned okay if you want to divide by two or multiply by two you have to use logic operations logic shift so logic shift you can multiply by two or divide by two right because i don't have sign here i don't have sign to keep right so if if this number one here right this number is 128 if you shift it it's going to be 64 because you divide by two okay guys so very easy again shift right divide by two shift the left multiply by two if your number is unsigned use logic shift to multiply and divide for both right but if your numbers are are signed okay you have to use arithmetic shift okay for shift left as i told you it doesn't uh, sorry for shift uh, for shift for shift right it doesn't matter uh, for uh, sorry for shift left it doesn't matter because logic shift left as i said is 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 similar to arithmetic shift left however what matters here more is the right because look here this is a very good example look here guys if i have one zero 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 okay and this one is signed number so this one should be minus or negative 128 right so if i put here if i shift if i sh put here one if i use arithmetic shift right and i shift by one by the last bit now i got minus 64 four, which is correct right this is if it is signed if it is unsigned here look here it's the same number same number this one was minus one two uh, sorry one one twenty eight we don't have here positive or, or minus right or negative because this is unsigned it's the same number here it is one twenty eight when i put zero i get 64 so it works right it works so conclusion conclusion if you want to multiply by two or divide by two if your numbers unsigned you can use logic shift all the time you are okay but if your number is unsigned, you have to use arithmetic shift so that you can divide by two and multiply by two. Okay, guys, any questions? Okay, great. So I am done with shift. Very easy topic. Now I'm, I'm going to move to rotate an instruction. Okay. They are very close to shift. So let me explain how, how it works. Rotate an instruction. Okay. Again, I have rotate left. I have rotate right. But, but here, don't be confused. Here, we don't have arithmetic rotate or we don't have logic rotate. No, we have only one type of rotate here. Don't be confused. Okay? So there is no logic and arithmetic as I explained before. Only one type of rotate. So what rotate is doing, you can just guess from the English name, rotate. It's not shift, rotate, right? So when, what, so when you rotate, so what's going to happen, here the carry is gonna come here this bit is gonna be come here shifted by one position the last bit is gonna go to the carry as you see here so after after i rotate left look at the direction still we have left and right because you can rotate this way or you can or you can do this way so still we have right and left right so this is left toward this left this one you right right but here rotate means you are not gonna shift to zero as we did before. You still shift, by the way. You still shift. So bit, bit, bit zero is gonna go to bit one, right? But we shift to scary. Very interesting. So the carry, the carry value, that's what I'm gonna insert here instead of zero before, right? So also, although we call it rotate, but actually what I'm doing here, I actually shift to the value of the carry, whatever in the carry okay so what's gonna happen the carry value is gonna come here bit bit zero shift it shift it shift it last one is gonna go to the carry so this is how it looks right okay this is for left and this is for right in case of right so again the carry is gonna come here and then the last one has to come here bit zero is gonna come here so it's gonna look like something like that okay guys so what i'm saying i can say we call it rotate but actually what we are doing, we are doing shift with carry, right? We are not going to shift with zero as I did before. We shift with the carry, whatever in the carry. The, if the carry has zero, we are going to shift with zero. If the carry has one, we are going to shift with, with, with one, whatever in the carry, right? So I can tell you, if, if I rotate register A nine times, imagine here, right? So if this is register A and I rotate it nine times, what, what I'm going to get after that, right? 
I'm gonna get register A again, right? Why? Because after one shift, bit zero here, bit zero zero, 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 and then bit zero zero. You look at them saying so everything will return back, right? Uh, so if you shift rotate nine times, uh, you are gonna get the initial value in A again, right? But in but in shift, because every time you insert zero, after each shift is as I said before, you are gonna get zero 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 zero. Okay, guys. Any question, guys? Okay. So for rotate, guys, we have left and right, as I said. Rotate, rotate left. We have only three instruction. R O L. Rotate left and then here memory location for a byte. Shift one byte in memory. We have rotate uh, left for register A, rotate left for register B, but we don't have rotate for uh, rotate rotate for words right or left. We don't have them again, but that doesn't mean you cannot do it. Okay, you cannot do it using one instruction, but you can do it using multiple instructions. The other one here, same thing, but R O R R here is for right. L here for left. So rotate right for one byte in memory, rotate right for register A, rotate right for register B. Okay. Before I give you example, again, I'm gonna go to the slides again. We have <clears throat> we have some numbers there so that you can understand it better. So if you look here, guys, register register B should have this value B D. BD is 1011101. So this is the initial value for register B. B. And the carry is one. After we execute this instruction, what, what should be B and what should be the carry, right? Let's see. What's going to happen, guys? Again, this is rotate left, right? So here, it's we're going to shift with oh, carry is one. So here, one is going to come here. This one is going to shift it by one, shift it by one, shift it by one. And the last one here, the last one here, so this one here, this bit is here, and last one has to go to the carry, right? So just by accident, the carry was one, and after rotate, also the carry is one, right? Because this value inserted here, and this value came to the carry. So if this is the initial value, I'm gonna get this value. Again, in next week quiz, I'm gonna give you numbers like this one. I'm I just wanna make sure you understand what I'm explaining. You understand what rotate means, what uh, uh, shift right means. That's it, right? So I'm gonna give you example something like that, okay? And we're gonna have a lab on on shift and rotate instruction. Again, if you study the topic, if you do the lab, if you do the quiz, you should you should be okay. You should understand the topic, okay? So let's have another example. If you register A stores this value B E, right? And the carry stores one. So this is. BE is one, this is the initial value, one zero one 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 zero, okay? And the carry is one, so this is the initial value, original value. And then we're gonna rotate, register A to the right, rotate right, right? So here you are gonna, uh, everything will go to the right, okay? So, he, so here, this, so, uh, and then you, uh, you are gonna insert, so the carry, you are gonna shift to the carry. So the carry is gonna come here. This one come here, this one come here, come here, come here. What about the original one? So this bit is gonna come here. This is the second bit is gonna become the first bit, right? And bit number three should be number two, right? Okay, now what about the first one? The first one has to go to, uh, to the, uh, is gonna go to the carry. So the carry was one, now it is zero. Okay, guys, any questions? Okay, let's have an, here also, Let's have a very interesting example here. Very, very interesting example. Uh, I want to I wanna write a program to count the number of zeros in register D. Okay, guys? So I have register D, and I need to know how many zeros are in register D. How many bits are zeros? You got what I'm saying? So what is the idea? How I can do it? This, this is the way I'm going to do it. Number one, I need, I need full loop for 16 times. Why? I'm going to tell you why. So I need to loop 16 times because in every iteration, I'm going to shift the register D. When I shift, I'm going to get one bit is going to go to the carry, right? And then I'm going to check if this bit is one or zero, right? And then if this, if this bit is zero, I'm going to increment the counter. And that's it. 
very easy so what i'm gonna do guys i'm gonna make full loop 16 times in every iteration in every iteration i'm gonna get one guy i'm gonna get one bit in the carry and then i'm gonna check the carry if you remember i already explained in instructions before to branch if the carry is one or branch if the carry is zero right so let me see here okay so before I choose a program, I think I, I have a very nice figure here. Let me choose this uh, figure here. Yeah, oops, this is other course I'm gonna teach. So yeah, so here, yeah. So here, uh, if, if this is the initial value guys this way, so after iteration one, I'm gonna get this guy, this one is gonna come here, right? And then I'm gonna check the carry. If the carry is zero, I'm gonna increment the counter. If it is not, I'm not gonna increment the counter, right? And then, and then, uh, in next iteration, I'm going to get this one, this guy. Next iteration, I'm going to get this one. So as you see here, guys, in every iteration, I'm going to get one, one bit, right? Of, that's why I need 16, because we have 16. In the last one, look at the last one here, in, in number 16. In, 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 in shift number 16, now all of them are zeros. And now this the last one here is going to go to the carry. And all of them are zeros. Because if you see here, in every shift, I insert one zero. So here I insert one zero. Now after two shifts, after three shifts, and so on. After 16 shifts, we have 16 zero. And the last bit, the most significant bit now is the carry. I already tested all of them. Okay, guys. So let's let's explain how how it works, uh, how I can do the program. Uh, again, all what I need. Number one, I need I need to loop 16 times. 16 times and i already explained i need four loop for 16 times i already explained many times before how can you do it so let's see uh i decided here and maybe that's i, li I like it maybe it's an interesting idea to use a memory location to do that because we don't have too many registers if you use a register you may have a problem because you need to use the register anyway so uh, so here i created a memory location i call it counter loop counter can you you can call it any name i just selected this name and the initial value is 16 right so i'm going to use this counter to create for loop how forget this part so just forget this part okay this is the for loop here and this part this is the for loop let's see how i created the for loop in every iteration as you see here guys in every iteration i'm going to decrement the loop counter, right? And if it is not zero, go back to loop. If it is not zero, go back to loop. Is that okay? So every iteration I'm gonna decrement, not zero, go back to loop, right? That's how I that's how I'm gonna create. So in the first iteration, counter is 16. Next iteration, it is 15, 14, 13, and so on. Once it is zero, I'm gonna go outside. Okay. I said it before, but because it is tricky, I'm gonna repeat it now, guys. Someone can ask me. Okay, but where is compare? Usually we use compare so before branch. Where is compare? Okay, if you want to use compare, that's okay. You can put compare here, but actually you don't need compare. Why you don't need compare? Because I use compare in instruction to set the flex. Already this one, because branch if not equal, this one only care about one flag, zero flag, right? This one is going to set the zero flag. That means after you decrement, if the result is zero, this one is gonna set the zero flag, and this one is gonna use the zero flag. So actually, you in this case, you don't need to use compare. But if you want to use it, that's okay. But you don't need, right? Because I'm quite sure this instruction should set the zero flag. I'm quite sure once this one is zero, once this one is zero, this instruction is gonna set the zero flag, right? And then this one is gonna look at the zero flag. So. So here, every iteration, as you see here, guys, I'm going to decrement the loop. If it is not zero, go back. Not zero, go back. So I'm going to repeat. So this part, this part here is going to be repeated. This part here is going to be repeated 16 times. Okay? 16 iteration. Okay, let me go back. This is the first thing I told you about. We need to make a loop for 16 times. Okay, number two. What should I do in every iteration? Number one, shift. Number two, check the bit. Uh, the carry bit, right? Because when I shift, I'm going to get one bit. I'm going to store it in, in the carry. That's what. So number one, I'm going to shift. Number two, I'm going to check the, the, the carry, right? So I'm going to say branch if carry is set. So if the carry is one, go to next. 
So skip, skip this step, right? So if the carry is equal to one, come here. If the carry is equal to zero, it's gonna come here because this one is gonna branch if carry is set. I explained this one, this instruction before. So if the carry is one, it's gonna skip to here. Otherwise, it's gonna increment the counter here. Is that clear, guys? Okay. Okay. So here, number one, if I wanna change this program to count the number of ones instead of the number of zeros, what would I change here? Only one letter. Very interesting, just one letter. You know what? This letter. So I can, if I put here letter C, branch, if carry is clear, okay? So if the carry is zero, I'm gonna skip. If the carry is zero, I'm gonna skip this one, right? If the carry is one, I'm gonna come here to increment. Okay, guys, very interesting. So here, um, if I, by changing only one letter here, I can count the number of ones, okay? This is number one. Number two, guys, how this can be useful in reality? You give us some interesting, some application. How, how this can be useful in reality? Uh, I can give you one example just to came to my mind, okay, guys? Maybe this word, these bits, one and zeros here, are coming from somewhere, okay? For example, uh, voting this system, vo voting, right? So maybe every one of these, okay, is coming, is coming from a switch, right? To vote, vote yes or no, right? Or approve or disapprove. So now I need to know how many yes and how many no, how many ones and how many zeros, okay? This is also a, a possible application. Maybe another application. Maybe these ones and zeros are coming from sensors. Uh, for I just I'm I'm just telling you some quick examples. You can you can think about many other applications. For example, I have some sensors. Okay, that this sensor, when a uh, 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 like a security system, you have or whatever some, some sensor are doing something, and now if if the majority are saying there is a risk or something like that, or at least if one of them is one, right? So you can check if any one of them is one, whatever. So anyway, I just to give you one example. You have a byte. Uh, this byte may be coming from somewhere, okay? Like like switches to vote, and then I want to count how many ones to know how many how many people voted yes. Uh, yes. Any question? I think one student un unmuted the mic. Any questions? Okay. I'm I'm done with so let me before I move forward yeah so what I want to explain now bo uh, boolean logic operation right but let me summarize quickly what I did before before I move forward what we did today guys very easy what we did today number one we have something called shift instructions okay I told you we have logic shift right and left and we have arithmetic shift for right and left I explain what shift means. In shift, we always shift with zero. So we always insert zero, and the last one has to go to the carry. Except, so we always, except here in case of arithmetic, uh, arithmetic, uh, um, arithmetic right. In arithmetic right, you shift with the last bit, right? And also, I explained how they work. I explained also, this is important here, that right and left, if you want to, it can be you divide by two and multiply by two. Uh, and I made it clear. In this course, if you don't use shift, it's I'm okay. If you don't, if you want to use multiplication or division, but usually, listen to me. If you want to do a lot of division operation, like like you want to do some kind of um, encryption scheme, in, so that needs a lot of uh, a lot of computation. In this case, you may think to use lift uh, shift to divide and multiply by two instead of using multiplication and division in instruction okay so here i said if 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 you want to multiply and divide by two unsigned numbers you can use logic shift in case of signed numbers you can use arithmetic uh, shifts uh, then after that i explained to rotate in instructions i told you we have rotate left to rotate right and i made it very easy rotate we can you can you can see it like it is shift similar to shift but in case of shift we always shift with zero okay but here i shift with the carry whatever in the, in the value of the carry 
right? So whatever in the carry is gonna come here, and the last one is gonna go to the carry. Okay. Now I'm gonna move to the next topic, which is about Boolean uh, Boolean logic operations. Okay. Uh, so here, um, you know bo Boolean logic operation. You know them like and bit bit by bit and or xor how can we do same thing and they are very useful as you will see right now very useful you are going to use them uh, all the time so here if you have a byte a or register a and register b or, or byte and byte okay how can you do bit by bit and 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 or 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 xor xor bit by bit so this is what i mean by bit twice or bit by bit logic operation so what we have here we have end you can end by byte to byte bit by bit or byte and byte or xor okay so let's let first quickly explain how end works how or works how xor works you already you already should know but i, I explain it in a different way i like it so this is how end works look how end works guys this is end as you know I have two inputs, 0 and x. x means anything. It can be 0 or 1, right? So I can say and in and, if one input is 0, the output is 0, regardless of the value of the other inputs. It's enough to find one of 0, right? So 0 and x is 0, regardless what is this. If this one is 0, it doesn't matter. If it is 1, it doesn't matter. Because one input 0, the result is 0, right? Now. If one input is one, when when and x, you are gonna get x here. You got what I'm saying? So if one input is one, I'm, so output should equal to the second bit here. Okay. Let's see. If I put one and zero, I'm gonna get zero, right? One and one, I'm gonna get one here. Okay. You know, guys, in in and and always give you zero except in one case when the two inputs are one and one, right? So let me say it again. And should work this way. Number one, if one input is zero, so do, don't look at the second one. The result is zero right away, right? If one input is one, so the output here should equal the same the same value here for x, right? This is how and works. What about or? How or works? Or should work this way. If, uh, if one input is one, don't think, of, don't, don't look at the other one. The output is one, right? Here it was zero, right? Here is one, right? So, you know, in in case of or guys, the output is one if at least one of the input is one, right? So that's why it is or. In other words, uh, the only way to get zero if all the inputs are zeros, right? So anyway, so here if one if one input is one, don't don't look at this other one. It's the result just one right away, right? But if the input is zero with x, so I'm gonna get x here. Okay, guys. Let's let's look how XOR works. How XOR works. XOR should work this way. Zero XOR X, I'm gonna get X. So zero is not gonna change. This input will be here, right? Uh this is how it works. If you go, if you remember in the digital system course, this is definition, right? This is the definition of XOR. Okay, but maybe you learn it in a different way. There was like a truth, a truth, a truth a table, uh, but this is also similar to the truth table, right? So zero, zero, I'm gonna get zero. Zero, one, I'm gonna get one, right? Here, one, one, and x, x here, I'm gonna get x prime, which is a complement of x, which means one, if I put here zero, if this is one, so I'm going to get flip. I'm going to flip this one. So if it is zero, I'm going to get one. If it is one, I'm going to get zero. Okay, guys. Now, how? So, so I explain how and works, how or works, how XOR uh, works. Okay. We are going to have an instructions for and, an instruction for or, an instruction for XOR. Okay. Now, this is the most important thing. How these are useful, how we are going to use them. Very, 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 very useful. We are going to use them all the time, OK? So here I'm saying how, how we are going to use them, guys. We are going to use them to do one of two things. Number one, what we call bit manipulation, OK? 
So this one can be used if you want to sit, if you want to clear, if you want to flip some bits in a pipe. Again, the problem, guys, we have is, the problem we have is, most of the time, we're going to work on pipes. We don't have any instructions that work on bits. You got what I'm saying? So if I, if I read, if I read the port, I'm going to, the whole port, I'm going to read the pipe. What if, and, and when you read this port, a port, which is a byte, one bit maybe is connected to a device, a, an LED. I want to turn it on or turn, turn. So the question is, that's what we call bit manipulation. The question is, if you have a byte, how can you set some bits in these bytes, clear some bits, flip some bits, and don't change the other bits, right? Many times we need to do something like that because, as I told you, I want to turn this LED on. So I have to put here 5 volt. To put 5 volt, you have a byte. Every bit in this byte is connected to one, one pin, one pin here, right? So all what you have to do, if you want to put here uh, 5, uh, uh, if you put here 5 volt, so in the corresponding bit, you have to put one. But you don't want to change the other ones. Right? So let me say it for the last time. Uh, bit manipulation means I have a byte. I want to do operation on this byte. Uh, okay? So that I'm going to change some bits by setting, by clearing, by flipping. So I want to set some bits, but also at the same time, I don't want to change the other bits. Right? So this is one part. We're going to use it all the time. The other part here, if you have if you have a byte, same thing, but but here here you are gonna change some bits. Here I have a byte, and I wanna check if 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 one bit or some bits are zeros or ones, right? So how I can do that? I explained one before, like branch if clear or branch of set. If you remember, I explained this one before. So this one is gonna check some bits in a byte, and it's gonna branch if these bits are clear or set. Okay, so, and I told you this one has a problem that's short. Now I can use some lo bo a Boolean logic operation to do the same thing, but using long branches, okay? And also, I think I explained before why. Why sometimes, I, why sometimes I have a byte, right? If you have a byte and you want to check some bits in a byte, why, why you need something like that, okay? I give you one example here, guys, okay? As I'm going to elaborate in chapter three, this byte, it's a port, port, right? Again, we don't have an instruction to read one bit. We don't have an instruction to change one bit. So all operation you have to do has to be on bytes, right? But in some situation, if I have a byte, right, I want to only check one bit, right? Because this bit maybe is coming from a switch. As I told you, as I'm going to explain in next chapter, this is the microcontroller. The microcontroller has a pin here. This pin is connected to a switch. This is switch, the hardware here, as I'm going to explain in chapter three somehow, if the switch is connected, it's going to put zero volt here, right? And if the switch is open, it's going to put five volt here, right? And then the hardware here, there is some hardware circuit here, if it is zero volt, it's gonna, there is a register you are gonna read a byte, right? It's gonna, every, every pin should have one bit here, one bit, right? If it is zero volt, it's gonna put logic zero. If five volt, you are gonna put logic one, right? So from programming point of view, from programming point of view, the problem now is, if you have a byte where every bit here is telling you the status of one pin, or when you switch here, if you have a byte, can you check? Can you check some bits here? Okay, so I don't care about these bits. I only want to care, I, I only want to check this bit if it is one or zero. And then if it is one, I'm going to do something. If it is zero, I'm going to do something else. Because if it is one, that means the switch is open. So the user want to do something. If it is zero, that means uh, the user want to, it's the switch is connected. That means the user want to do something else. So let me tell you the conclusion, guys. The conclusion is, here I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm explaining Boolean logic operation. We have three three instruction. We have and or XOR, right? 
I'm going to explain this in instructions. It's very easy to explain the instructions, but you should fully understand how they are useful as well, right? So uh, they are useful because, number one, I can use them to manipulate some bits. If you have a byte, right, and you can change some bits in these bytes, a change means you can set some bits and don't change the other bits. You can clear some bits and don't change the other bits. You can flip some bits and also I'm not going to change the other bits, okay? Or, or you can have a, a byte and you, I want to check if this bit is one or zero, right? Um, again, I told you in chapter three, we are going to do this one all the time. So uh, here, okay. So now, let me see the time. Still, we have one minute, okay. So what I'm saying, as I'm, I'm going to elaborate next time, guys, end, end, end operation, logic end, should help me to clear some bits. If you want to clear some bits, you have to use in. If you want to set some bits, you have to use or. If you want to flip some bits, you have to use XOR. Wow. Why is that? Why? I'm going to tell you why. If you look at how end works, you will figure it out. Look how end, end works here, guys. Bit by bit, right? If I put zero here, and I'm going to put zero. That's why if you want to clear some bits, I have to put zero here, right? To clear some bits. Okay. What about the bits I don't want to change? Just put one because one is not good. Because I told you before, guys, I have a byte. I want to change some bits and I don't want, I want to clear some bits and I don't want to change the other bits, right? So if you want to clear some bits, just put zeros because the result is going to be zero, right? But if you don't want to change, just put one, right? Use the same logic here, the same logic. You will see or is used if you want to set some bits. Why? Look here. One is going to put one. Right? Zero, no change. So the bits I don't want to change, I'm going to put zeros under these bits. The bits I want to set, I'm going to put one. Right? Same thing for XOR. Look here. Zero, no change. One, flip. So the bits you want to flip, you should put ones under this bit. The bits you don't want to change, just put zeros. Again, guys, I what I want to do, I want to, I want to do operation on bytes. I want to do operation on bytes, but actually I want to change some bits, right? Inside this byte, and don't change the other the other bits because we don't have an instruction to work at the bit level, right? So I'm going to work on the byte level, but actually I'm going to set bits, secure bits. Anyway, I think I exceeded the time. So that's enough for today. So see you next time, guys. Bye.